Febrile convulsions are really common in children. As a parent, they're absolutely terrifying to watch. As clinicians, it's really important that we give accurate advice and information to parents and help to bust those febrile convulsion myths. Febrile seizures or convulsions are seizure episodes that happen to young children in the context of a febrile illness. So they may have just a regular childhood illness like a cold or other viral infection and they get a convulsion during that illness. Sometimes they might get the convulsion even though they've got no temperature at the time. In some cases, the child might not actually have a fever at the time they have a convulsion, but they might develop a fever a few hours later. Myth one, you need to keep the temperature down. That is not the goal of what we're trying to do in children with febrile convulsions. So we know that it's in the course of the febrile illness that they'll get the febrile convulsion, but we're not trying to desperately keep the temperature down to prevent a febrile convulsion. And the reason is that there isn't any evidence that keeping the temperature down will stop the child having a febrile convulsion. Sometimes children are prone to febrile convulsions and if they're gonna have one, they're gonna have one. So we should continue to treat with antipyretics, but that should be the same as we normally do, which is if the temperature is making the child distressed, or they seem in pain or unsettled, then we give antipyretics to help settle that fever. We're not giving the antipyretics with a view to stopping them having a febrile convulsion, because if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. This is really important when we explain to parents when they go home that the child is likely to have another fever. It doesn't mean that they're going to have another febrile convulsion. They may do, but unfortunately, there's nothing that the parents can do to prevent that happening. Myth two. Febrile convulsions mean that the child is going to go on to develop epilepsy. It's just not the case that children with febrile convulsions go on to develop ep epilepsy. There is a slightly increased risk depending on the type of febrile convulsion. So children who have had a one-off simple febrile convulsion that was a generalized tonic-clonic seizure that resolved itself, these children have a slightly higher risk than the general population of developing epilepsy. In children who've had a complex febrile convulsion, so one that lasts more than 10 minutes, one that's a focal shoot, seizure or one that's where you get a recurrent episode within 24 hours, they are going to have a moderately increased risk, so about 10% of developing epilepsy compared to children who don't have febrile convulsions. But our biggest concern is the children who have really prolonged seizures. So if you have a seizure lasting over 30 minutes, then you do have a risk of developing epilepsy that's somewhere around 30 to 40%. And that might not happen for many years. Myth three, febrile convulsions only medication to stop them. This might be the case, but it's not necessarily in all cases. So it's really the same management as you would with an afebrile seizure, which is that if the seizure stops itself within a short period of time, usually five minutes, then you don't need to give any medication. But if the seizure is going on for longer than five minutes, then it is appropriate to give some medication and our first line treatment for these is gonna be benzodiazepines. The vast majority of febrile convulsions that we see in children are simple febrile convulsions that stop themselves without any medication within a couple of minutes or less. Myth four, febrile convulsions cause brain damage or long-term problems. This isn't the case and there's no evidence that simple febrile convulsions or even short febrile convulsions that need medication to stop them cause any long-term brain damage. It's something that families really worry about when they see their child having a seizure because it's so scary. Many parents will say that they, they thought their child was dying. So it is a really difficult thing to experience as a parent to witness your child having a seizure. But we can reassure families by reinforcing that there is no evidence that simple febrile convulsions cause any long-term effects on brain development or brain function. And myth five, we have to admit every patient with a febrile convulsion. It isn't the case that we need to admit every patient with a febrile convulsion. Many patients who have the first episode of a febrile convulsion when it's a simple, meaning short, generalized, self-limiting febrile convulsion and the child looks very well. You may know the source of fever, you may not know the source of fever, but you may have reassured yourself on the nice traffic light guidance that the child is well with no red flags or amber flags, then that child doesn't necessarily need to be admitted to hospital. They could go home and you would give them appropriate safety netting on how to manage future febrile convulsions 
and of course that they'd need to return if the child has another, certainly in the context of the current illness. Also, often when we see families of children who have recurrent febrile convulsions, they're very used to seeing what it looks like. It's less of a worrying time for them because they know that previously the child's been well afterwards. So again, if the child recovers well, looks well, and you know this has been an ongoing problem, then the child doesn't necessarily need to be admitted. There are reasons to admit children with febrile convulsions, definitely if they're prolonged or recurrent or focal or anything that moves them from simple to complex febrile convulsions, then you would be admitting. And another reason that it's reasonable to admit is parental concern. If parents have had a child with their first febrile convulsion and they've never seen or heard of a febrile convulsion before, it is going to be terrifying. Many will feel a lot happier if they can be observed overnight because they're worried about the risk of future febrile convulsions, which of course, there's no way for us to predict. So if you have the resources to do that, it's perfectly reasonable to observe families for that reason too. These are my top five febrile convulsion myths. If you enjoyed this video, you will enjoy my video on top five tips on bronchiolitis, which you can see here.